as far as the today's class is concerned in today's class we will be uh, concluding the first solution of the gyroscopic motion and that's what we have been calling as the what we call that as the we have we, we said the study precision okay so we'll be ending up the study precision motion today so if i recapitulate what we had done till now uh, first of all we did we derived the euler equations of motion and then applied the euler equations of motion to the uh, gyroscope and while we applied euler equations of motion on the gyroscope uh, we said that um, the equations of motion of the gyroscope need to be solved and the first solution we gave was the study precision and in case of study precision the last equation that we obtained in the previous class was summation of all the moments about point o summation of all the moments about point o is equal to moment of inertia about z axis that was i omega z minus i prime moment of inertia about the transverse axis that's x and y phi dot phi dot and phi dot cos theta phi dot cos of theta multiplied by phi dot multiplied by phi dot sine of theta j cap sine of theta j cap this was the last expression that we discussed last time okay and if you look at this expression it tells us that as far as the gyroscope in study precision is concerned a gyroscope in study precision when the angle with respect to z axis is constant when the angle of rotation of the disc is constant when the angle of rotation of the outer uh, gimbal is constant okay at that time the summation of all the moments is given by this equation this is the equation and if you look this at this vector equation the summation of all the moments is along the y axis okay that's along j cap that's what is shown here summation of all the moments is along the j yeah now uh, if you again try to inspect or visualize this equation the equation can uh, the, can be you know uh, more easily understood if we believe or if we just recall that summation of all the forces acting on the gyroscope let's take point o summation of all the point forces acting on the gyroscope is equal to zero the reason to this summation of forces to be equal to zero is simple because the gyroscope is not tri translating along x axis it's not translating along y axis it's not translating along z axis the gyroscope does not uh, possess any translation at all when the gyroscope does not have a translational motion it simply indicates that the summation of all the forces about x axis about y axis about z axis has to be equal to zero okay so summation of all the forces of the gyroscope is equal to zero at the same time what's very important is the fact that the gyroscope is simply uh, simply processing okay so uh, we can also think of uh, we can also visualize this equation now in order to maintain we can write this text as uh, let me write the text over here this is something important to maintain gyroscope we can say to maintain gyroscope to maintain gyroscope in precision to maintain gyroscope in precision this couple should be applied this couple should be applied this couple should be applied about an axis about an axis perpendicular perpendicular to the precision axis and to the sipin axis of the gyroscope and to the sipin axis of the uh, gyroscope this is something important okay let me highlight it 
it says that to maintain let me clean it first to maintain sorry yeah to maintain uh, the gyroscope precision to maintain gyroscope in precision this couple should be applied about an axis perpendicular to the precision axis and to the spin axis of the gyroscope that is this much amount of the couple this much amount of the moment is to be applied if we want to maintain the gyroscope in this motion if we want to maintain the precision of the gyroscope okay if we want that the gyroscope should always have a constant angle with respect to z axis okay it should spin along small z axis with a constant angular rate okay that is psi dot and the angle of rotation with rest of the outer gimbal should be constant that is phi dot if we want that psi dot phi dot to be constant as well as this theta to be constant then along this small y axis some amount of the couple or the moment is to be applied and you know the magnitude of the moment is given by this equation okay so this much amount of the couple or moment is required for the gyroscope to maintain its precision precision number one number two you look at the precision if you look at the precision of sorry if you look at the couple m not the m not couple is having direction along j axis okay if you look at this j axis this is the line along which the couple must be applied and this j is perpendicular to your small z because we are in a rectangular coordinate system i mean to say the small y is perpendicular to small z okay as well as perpendicular to small x fine now as far as the z axis is concerned z axis is the axis that's what we call as that we have been calling as the axis of the spin okay this is along which the the gyroscope uh, body is spinning okay so this is the axis of spin so it means y axis is is, is automatically perpendicular to z axis because the small x small y and small z this is a rectangular coordinate system so when our resultant moment is along y axis y axis is perpendicular to the spin axis fine number 2 and is that this y axis is also perpendicular to the small z axis okay because if you look at your capital z axis the capital z axis is like this this is capital z axis and if you look look at the small y axis the small y axis is like this okay the angle between them is also 90 degree okay fine so if we look the the direction of the resultant moment the resultant moment for for the gyroscope to maintain the precision the resultant moment has to be along an axis which is perpendicular to the spin axis as well as perpendicular to the precision axis okay because this is the axis along with the gyroscope processes this is very important and you know as far as the big ships are concerned the aircrafts are concerned they have a lot of mass as a result of which the moment of inertia terms are very very uh, the magnitude of this moment of inertia terms is very large as a result the resultant moment magnitude is very large so large amount of moment is required for the gyros for these ships uh, for to be maintained uh, in a particular direction okay in order to disturb it from those from from the precision okay a large amount of moment is required okay so as far as ships aircrafts or some other bo bodies traveling bodies three dimensional Uh, motion bodies possessing three dimensional motion are concerned so they tend to maintain their motion in the precision okay so their tendency to maintain their motion in precision is responsible uh, for them uh, to act as perfect gyroscopes okay anyways we can at least conclude out here that as far as the moment is concerned the resultant moment of the gyroscope is about an axis which is perpendicular to the precision axis and the spin axis and the magnitude is given by this formula now we can again say we can go to a special case where we uh, and in the end we can go to a special case of the yeah, the, the 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 gyroscopic motion and we conclude this solution from here if we believe that this angle theta is 90 that is we are, we take up a case where we believe that let this theta be equal to 90 degree this is something you know where we can actually visualize our equation let's take up a case when theta is 90 so when this theta is 90 what type of what will happen this z axis the, the overall motion that you will obtain it will be like this for theta equal to 0 for theta equal to 90 the motion that will obtain will be like this okay this is the case when theta is 90 because look at the z axis small z and capital z axis is having angle theta in between them now let's suppose the angle theta we are giving value of 90 degree so angle between capital z and small z is now 90 degree okay now what's happening as we are changing this angle this axis small z axis is called the spin spin axis 
capital Z axis is called the precision axis, okay? And this small y axis is called the moment axis or the couple axis along which the resultant moment x. Now the question is, the fact is that when we give theta equal, theta an angle of 90 degree, given theta an angle of 90 degree, what will happen? This small z and capital Z will be at an angle of 90 degree with respect to each other, that's here. Small z and capital Z are here, okay? Small z is our spin axis, small z we are calling spin axis. Capital Z is our precision axis, it's our precision axis. And as far as the small y axis is concerned, it is the result of moment axis. It is a couple axis or the moment axis. So this is what happens if we give an angle theta equal to 90 degree. And you know, the equation of the moments, the summation of all the moments, we know the vector equation for summation of all the moments about point O, the formula for it, which we have just written and derived in the previous classes, I omega Z minus uh, I prime phi dot, it was minus I prime phi dot cos of theta. And here the equation is M, um, summation of all the moments about point O is this equation. Now for theta equal to 90 degree, as we put theta equal to 90, cos 90 is zero, this term goes sine 90 is one. Therefore, summation of all the moments about point O will become equal to I omega z i omega z phi dot sine theta j cap sine of theta j cap this one okay this is for what this is summation of all the moments that is for an angle theta equal 90 degree even if theta is some other term we can also calculate it okay and uh, as far as the omega z is concerned, we know, uh, we also have the expression for omega z. We know we had substitute omega z is equal psi dot plus phi dot cos of theta, phi dot cos of theta. Now, when we have theta equal to uh, cos 90 is zero, therefore omega z will become equal psi dot psi dot so if we substitute in this equation we'll get summation of all the moments about point o coming out equal to i omega z i omega z in place of omega z we'll write that side the side dot in place of this omega z we'll write this as side dot i side dot phi dot and we have As, uh, by the way, sine 90 is 1. We can remove here. This is 1. Phi dot sine 90 is 1. This is j cap. So this is in place of i. Right? I psi dot j cap. This is the resultant moment for theta equal 90 degree. Okay. So i times phi dot psi dot. This much moment. Okay. This much of the moment is acting along this wire cap to maintain the steady precision. If you have to maintain the gyroscope in this motion, if you have to give motion, if you are giving uh, a motion to this gyroscope, if you are giving motion to this disc, okay, in this way. So in order to maintain it in this uh, direction, in order to maintain its motion, okay, the moment that should be acting along y axis should be equal to this much, okay, i times psi dot phi dot, and that should be acting along j axis. Then we can conclude thus if we apply a couple about an axis gyroscope processes uh, i will write it over here uh, this expression i will summarize here means what does it state is the fact that if we apply thus if we apply thus if we apply a couple equal to m naught okay to the gyroscope to the gyroscope about an axis about an axis perpendicular to the axis of spin 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 the gyroscope 
the gyroscope processes about an axis the gyroscope processes about an axis perpendicular perpendicular to both the spin and the couple axis. That's it. Okay. So that's it. If we apply a couple moment m naught, that is, if we apply a couple m naught to the gyroscope about y axis, which is perpendicular to the spin axis, okay, then the gyroscope will process about an axis which is perpendicular to the spin axis as well as to the couple axis it starts processing okay so this is something very important that how does the gyroscope process that is if we apply a moment to the gyroscope about some axis then it processes about an axis which is perpendicular to both the spin axis and the couple axis okay and you know the moment that we just discussed was coming out m naught we wrote that as equal to i psi dot phi dot j cap. Okay, this can also be written as in this case we can write this as phi dot this is vector cross i times psi dot. We can write this like this. Okay, the reason for this is that as far as the phi dot is concerned, the phi dot is along k cap. Okay, as far as psi dot is concerned, it's along z cap. And we know this is along capital K cap, this is along small k cap. Okay, when you take the cross product between them, it will be along j cap. Okay, so the cross product will be i phi dot psi dot at capital K cross the small k is along the axis which is perpendicular to both that is jk we'll get it we'll get the both so remember this expression of remember this way of writing this expression okay so this is the gyroscopic precision yeah. with the precision of the gyroscope about uh, some axis when some moment is acting about the couple axis okay so this is one of the solution i hope that you will uh, recall the previous lecture and this lecture you will uh, recapitulate and you will make up what uh, actually we are trying to make you understand. Now we are left with the torque free motion as one more uh, solution of the gyroscopic motion, which hopefully we'll be doing in the next class. Thank you.